everyone. This is Luca Mino here with Frank Gregory Ford. Once again, this is Global News Update on TLV TV, brought to you by the Liberty Beacon Project, where we give you complete backstage, up-to-date info as to the developments occurring in our world today. How are you doing, Greg? I'm in fine form. Got some great info. Mm. Well, we both have good snapshots today. Oh, okay. do, do we ever? So, do you want me to start? Uh, yes, go ahead, by all means. Well, we got to share screens for me to do that. So, let me okay. start by showing um, our first shot. And with, with this one, we just want to thank everybody for, for watching. We really do. We want to thank people. And it's thanks to people watching and listening that we're at uh, number 50 or 51, I believe, or 52. I'm not even, I'm, mm -hmm. it's going so fast, I can't even keep track. Uh, in the first, in the first snapshot, there is no Al-Qaeda, and I'm so glad we have Greg here because this validates absolutely everything that I've been working on for the last 30 years. The truth is, there's no Islamic army or terrorist group called Al-Qaeda or anything else for that matter. Any informed intelligence officer knows this, but there is a propaganda campaign to make the public believe in the presence of an identified entity representing the devil only in order to drive TV watchers to accept a unified international leadership for a war against terrorism. Just that one phrase is humongous. It, there's so much involved in that one phrase. The company behind this propaganda is the U.S. Okay, so he suddenly dies while hiking in the Scottish Highlands a week after giving that speech. Okay, we won't go any further on that one. Uh, be all you can be in the army, right? Be all you can be. Help protect poppy fields in Afghanistan for Big Pharma and the CIA. Then come home and be a cop. And then you can arrest poor people for taking the drugs that you helped produce. Let's go through that again. Be all you can be in the army, okay? Help protect the poppy fields in Afghanistan for Big Pharma and the CIA. Then you can come home and be a cop. And arrest poor people for taking the drugs that you helped produce. Go find out what the war on, on drugs is. Some of them are not meant for the one, right? <laughs> Look at this one from Aldous, Aldous Huxley in 1931. The perfect dictatorship would have an appearance of a democracy, but it would basically be a prison without walls in which the prisoners would not even dream of escaping, right? It would essentially be a system of slavery where through consumption and entertainment, and we call that uh, bread and circus right now, uh, the slaves would love their servitude. And this is the idea. Uh, this guy saw a missile hitting the Pentagon, not a plane. All of the sensors were turned off that day. Apparently one did not shut off, and it shows this object hits the Pentagon, and it did not look like an airplane. Uh, this gentleman also says, as far as the Twin Towers go, at each floor, successive puffs of smoke are seen, squibs, all the way down. Puffs of smoke are due to controlled demolitions. We kind of... I'll know that after 16 years. That was from Major General Albert Stubblebine, and Greg, you worked with him, I hear. Yes, yes, I did for several years, as a matter of fact. Uh, between he and Colin Powell, yeah, yeah, they were my ultimate bosses. And then, of course, when I was in Iraq, I worked for the now famous uh, General Janice Karpinski. Mm. So, and and it's funny you, you would think that these generals would be all supportive of you know the whole concept of 19 hijackers attacking uh the world trade center and and all this kind of stuff right. al-qaeda al-qaeda representatives by the way mm -hmm. and you say al-qaeda funny thing was is that was the briefing i was given by lieutenant colonel anthony schaefer an able danger in 2000 okay the year 2000 july and it, it's funny uh everybody believed the briefing then mm -hmm. that it was al-qaeda and now that after we found out that that uh, uh osama bin laden was actually dead he died right after 9 11 and he died in the custody of and treatment and care of uh, the CIA uh, physicians, okay, mm. and and so and then to further that point, I'll make it quick. Mm. Is something like this <laughs> is is um, Benazar Bhutto 
that was her point when she was, was reelected president or elected president. Right. Okay. She returned. That's what she was going to tell the United States and the world. Okay. Mm -hmm. That bin Laden was dead, had been dead. So you can forget about uh, Pakistan mm -hmm. and about Abad. All right. Uh, as you know, with a SEAL team assassination right. nope, you know, of, of bin Laden. Nope. Didn't happen folks. Okay. And I just found out this, this morning, excuse me, yesterday morning that, uh, the constellation where the aircraft carrier, where all of this was supposed to have taken place, where his body was taken, bin Laden's body was supposedly taken. Well, words getting out now. No, it wasn't quite like that. In fact, his body was never taken to the constellation, and it was not kicked over the side like a bunch of trash, which mm -hmm. they love to tell the American public. Right. You know, that all appears to be a whole bunch more of uh, um, CIA uh, fiction production. Right. Okay? Of course. That's what we're seeing here. And mm -hmm. Stubblevine General was was one of the first. Okay, with well, first to say. There's something really wrong with this 9-11 attack, mm -hmm. especially the attack on that one unique section of the Pentagon. Right. Okay? So that, well, that's my is... take on it. And it's funny, none of those generals now believe that any of the uh, official story of 9-11. Right. Well, uh, this is a really good one that I liked. I, I, I could almost call this a, uh, a proverb because it's um, – it's called The Rock Through the School Window. This is a, a, a friend of mine, Chris Vlar from Europe, uh, tells me this story. The teacher brings in Bill and Mark in a whodunit thing. They both look at each other. Uh, Mark said Bill did it. Uh, Bill said Mark did it. So the teacher takes each one of them aside and says, hey, listen, I'll pay you to investigate. Okay. I'll, and then he takes, she takes the other one aside. I'll pay you to investigate. They all get paid for investigating. The story goes around and around. Nothing ever gets solved. Isn't that the way things are going, right? War, war, and take a guess who, who said this. Greg, you, you already know, but let's let, let them think about this one. War is important in many ways for establishing the new world order. War creates a constant flow of progress, of profits, to our military industrial complex. War rids the world of a large number of useless eaters. That kind of blows the whistle on who said it. War keeps people hating each other rather than focusing their attention on us, the people who created the conflicts. Uh, I don't think we have to read all of this. I just want people to either put it on pause or if you're a fast reader, you can go through it. But we have other stuff to go through, so I wanted to share this. And yes, it is. Uh, I. I did that cool black and white transition to, to white and black uh, to tell you, yes, it was. The people who guessed it, indeed, it was Henry Kissinger who said it, and we've seen it on the meme before. Um, and when you're talking truth, please do me a favor, don't spread fake news. Leave that to the professionals. I thought that was cute. I love that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, with so many things coming back in style, I can't wait till morals and intelligence become a trend again. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things I, I had to share with you, good old Clint. Um, in our Native American segment, it's very important for me to tell people uh, the Black Elk story about the children. Uh, grown men can learn from very little children from you know because their, their hearts are pure, and the Great Spirit may show them many things that older people miss, okay? And my story for today is this one. I'm going hunting, uh, moose hunting. Uh, it's a moose hunting expedition. I was supposed to have the camera, and the interviewer was supposed to interview these, this father and son team that went moose hunting. They found the moose. They put it on, on its back, and they gutted it. And this is the picture of the son while the dad goes to get a beer. And while he's hiccuping, he says, oh, come on, stop acting like a woman and uh, get with it. We, we got stuff to do. He stayed there just like that. Long enough for me to take the picture. If you look at the way the fingers are outstretched, it's pretty much the way the ancestors used to thank the animal for giving, them, for giving its life so that the people could live. And this is 
quote unquote white person or European kid doing this. And this is where, where, you know, the adult misses what the child's doing totally. And I thought it'd be really good to put the two to two and two together. We have a gorgeous picture that uh, we hadn't seen before. Um, and it's pretty important. It, it's the, uh, the Paiute Indian group near Cedar, needs Cedar, Utah. This is a picture from 1872. And uh, the government officials were charting the land for, for the first time. And they managed to get a picture like that. Greg, are you still getting my image? Are we, do we still have a good connection? I'm getting the image, but you, the audio is breaking up. OK. A very quick note on assimilation. What is assimilation if not the act of doing to yourself and to others what was first done to you? And uh, that's going to be a, quite a bit of a, uh, a subject or a turnaround on, on our next shows because they all have to do with cultural assimilation, uh, terrorism, and genocide. And this is basically what we think of the Indian right now. He's dead, you know, and that's what they want. The, the American government, in the case of, the, of America, uh, they don't want us thinking Indian anything. And the grandfathers and the grandmothers and the traditionalists are the biggest threat. And as we can see in statues like this one, uh, you know, the man claiming, you know, superiority and oneness with God, and he thinks he's sent by God. So, you know, the Indians believe him. Okay. You know, and they go along with it. And, you know, this is how a lot of it happened. And when you see a statue like that today, it's just horrifying. And uh, this is one of, one of the strongest pictures that I think I've ever seen about Indian life. If you can think of the right part of the image here as being what Indian life was, how sacred it was, along comes modern technology and the invader. And what do we get? We get drugs. Because sneakers over the power line would indicate on the reserve or in poorer communities where the drugs were sold. So what we have is a beautiful set of moccasins. And uh, you can see the cross on them to show how original they were. And now they're being sold for drugs. And I thought that was very, very appropriate because that's exactly what's happening to native tradition as, as, we, as we speak right now. Um, this is another good example. Re remember the kid preying on the animal. Look at this. The head of an elk just dropped on the side of the road. So where has sacred gone? That's, that's my question. This is where sacred has gone, right here. N you know, sexuality, uh, misappropriation, uh, you know, shows like this where, where they wear headdresses. Bought at eBay. Woohoo! You know? And these are, you know, redneck dream, dream catchers. These are the kinds of things that we see on Facebook or on, on other, you know, on, on other social media. Well, uh, never mind that one. Th th this is how things were done. And you can see the cross around this person's neck. And uh, they ev some of them say they even had the cross to represent the four directions. So when they saw the Europeans arrive with their crosses, of course, they didn't think of them as the enemy. This is Cocopa Indian uh, Mosquito Billy. Look at the face. Look at the facial expressions. You know, these are, these are people that lived before we did. And now we have Christianized Indians, so proud to be Native American, with a, with a, you know, a cross in the background. Okay? And speaking of crosses, very quickly, Greg, this is what, uh, this is what the Carlisle Indian School did, the industrial school, they called it. They got the Indian... They got the, the Indian out of the man to save the man and kill the Indian is basically what they wanted, to assimilate them, not to help them prosper as Indians, but to have them show their place as menials, as servants, as being in a prison without walls. This is what they were. They were stripped of all identity, and they were, you know, terrorized. And this is what my friend Larry Cooper lives, for, uh, lives, uh, lives with right to today. I'm going to read this real quick. Imagine you're part of the family here, okay, like Greg has. Greg is taking the, his government to court because he has been tortured and renditioned in Iraq, okay? Listen to this. 
I plan on suing my late mom and dad's residential school records as their last surviving son. The, the dark inheritance they lived through all of their young lives affected more than just them. It's my story as well. I see it passing down from generations born after me. My brothers are dead now as a direct result of what we went through or what we lived through precisely because of what my parents lived through. No truth, no reconciliation. End of story. That's how powerful things get when you live through things like that. In Canada, it was called the, the Indian Act. That's how they did things. In the United States, it was called the Dawes Act that just chomp, 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 chomp their way through Indian lands, making treaties that they never meant to, uh, to honor in the first place. Thank you, Greg, for letting me uh, do that. Oh, oh, of course. Connecting. I just lost him. It hasn't stopped recording. Cool. Okay. okay. Let's roll. You, um, you, sh you show the Dawes, okay, Mr. Mm -hmm. Dawes, and the Dawes rolls of Tahlequah, Oklahoma. Yeah. And, and I have probably about 400 of my relatives and family members. I knew he was going to go there. I knew it. <laughs> oh, Absolutely. it's your birthday today. I'm not going to do what yeah. I did on the phone. I promise I won't do it. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. I, well, thank, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Now, this is my biographical birthday, okay? Right. You know, biographical gives, you know, the, the printed uh, record, uh, basically, that they do in Hollywood. When you, you know, what I don't understand is, is I was raised with a lot of the stars now, you know, you know in Hollywood, and they keep getting younger. I don't know what's going on, okay? So all I can ascertain is that we have, uh, uh, for Hollywood, we have the biographical, you know, birthday for everybody, mm -hmm. which goes the other way after a certain point. And then we have the biological age, which is what I feel, which I, I feel it's like 38 going on 40 for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's, that's my birthday today. All this, right. This, so, this show, this show will be dedicated to you for your birthday. You Thank go. you so much. Mm -hmm. Now, I now I am going to try to make up for a little bit of time because I've been inundated with people calling and wanting my opinion on a lot of things. Uh oh. And one of them is Las Vegas. Okay. I you know now is is that any way to treat a place like Las Vegas? You know, uh, where ev what do they say? Everything that happens in Las Vegas stays in Las Vegas. Right. Okay. Well, I don't think this is going to be. And I think that's exactly why that has been named as the opening chapter in Gladio C. Mm. Yes, there's everyone knows of Gladio A, which was in Europe, Gladio B, which was in the Middle East. And now we, we have something very interesting. We have a white man, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, you know, it is a styrofoam cup, grabbing automatic weapons, and shooting up a bunch of other basically white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. Mm. I think that's the picture that the CIA wants to bring here, okay? And be under no false impressions. It is the uh, cocaine importation agency that is bringing you this, this bloodbath, all right? Mm. Now, all, all, all things aside from the Illuminati and so forth that are going on, yes, the girlfriend was actually the girl girlfriend from the philippines yes she was actually sponsored by a four-star general back in the 80s and she was sponsored uh at the behest of the cia okay mm -hmm. now wouldn't you know it the cia has to come in somewhere in into all of this so yeah uh, now i from what i can gather okay is she basically recruited him okay which is, gee, that's what, that's what assets, CIA assets do, okay? They recruit people, okay, to, where they become resources, okay? Mm -hmm. So what we have here is the girlfriend recruiting him, okay? He was recruited, and yes, he did get military training. That's something that they don't want to talk about right now. He got military training in Virginia, okay, in specifically Warrington, okay? That's where they produce, as they, as they like to say, Virginia farm boys in the CIA. 
okay? Yes, that he was taught how to shoot. That is like the capital. Virginia is the capital for U.S. Marine Corps shooting ranges. So the best, the best snipers in the world come out of Virginia for all intents and purposes. So, and also, as, as of this morning, uh, that great uh, of mental stability, our president, okay, was talking about how we need to start screening people for mental illness. Um, gosh, that smacks of George Orwell, mm -hmm. 1984, folks. Well, I think it's about time we all admit that, yes, it's here, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, this situation is happening. So whether we like it or not, everybody that is open to being monitored very closely on an electronic medium is monitored. And is anybody out there going to tell me that the NSA didn't detect this guy buying 32 assault weapons, mm -hmm. okay, with thousands of rounds of ammunition? Right. And he took, he took all that by himself. He carried all that by himself. Well, no, it appears to be that there were two other gunmen, two other people that accompanied him. Mm -hmm. And yes, they did bring it in, in American tourister suitcases. Okay. I think there was a couple of Samsonite briefcases in there, but it was over a long period of time. All right. And, and uh, by the way, Samsonite, that was my graduation present when I graduated from high school. You know, most people get a trip to Europe. My folks gave me Samsonite luggage, okay? Ah. You think they were trying to tell me something? Okay. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yes, this, this man was, uh, he was mentally conditioned, okay? Yes, he did have some mental, uh, mental treatment, but he was uh, mentally conditioned. And if that's the case, who are we going to blame for something like this? Mm -hmm. Wasn't it Republican President Ronald Reagan? who got into office and shut down virtually all the mental, um, mental treatment facilities that were available. Right. Wasn't he a Republican? Okay. And if you want to see something interesting, start checking out when we started seeing mass shootings. Right. Just about the same time. They started with a elementary school in Stockton, California, and then they went on to do such illustrious uh, mass murder and slaughter, like in Aurora, Colorado. Okay. And then we had the infamous Columbine shootings. All right. Yeah. Now, and, and, and who was behind most of those? As far as I can tell, those were white Anglo-Saxon kids. Hmm. Now, what is going on here? Doing... What were they? What were their doctors prescribing for them in all of these cases I just mentioned? Okay, including Sandy Hook, S I S I A O. Please, please remember that acronym, S I A O, as in antidepressants. All right. Now we what we have okay in in this case in Las Vegas is somebody that really just took a, a little one step out. Outside the norm, all right? right. Instead of being young, you know, and impressionable, and passionate about a subject matter, okay. Yes, he was a very successful multimillionaire, okay, who had an interesting background, all right. It's probably won't be released to the public, but yes, he was much more than just a middle-aged guy suffering through a, mid a midlife crisis, all right. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, and, and, and when I say Gladio C, that's referring to the, the new terrorist program. As I've already said on this show, it, it is going to escalate. What we're trying to do now, you know, the, the CIA is trying to do with the powers that be, of course, is they're trying to militarize the cops, okay? Mm -hmm. And obviously, they're going, you know, to a great length to do this. They and want to have a army slash uh, law enforcement agency controlling the population of America. Okay, your rights, people, are are becoming well cooked. All right, if not downright burnt, black. Greg, right? 
tell me if I'm wrong. Please tell me if I'm wrong. But when you, uh, the, the way you said that, militarized, the cops are being militarized. Yes. The, the first word I'm thinking of is desensitized, desensitization. And I'm showing right now a picture of a soldier with a Palestinian girl shot through the head lying right next to him, and he's drinking coffee. Okay, um, do you have that picture available? Yes. I'd I'll, like to see that. I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. And this is, this is the type of desensitization I'm talking about. And, you know, they, it begs the question, will you shoot on your own people? Well, they had never asked that question before of, of the military returning from a war. Well, this is what they asked us when we returned from Iraq. Are you willing to shoot your own people? I wonder why. Okay. About 85% said, no problem. Let us at them. All right. Uh, because they had just desensitized a group of impressionable young men. Uh, most of them were 20 somethings mm -hmm. to go ahead and shoot everything that moved in Iraq. Okay. I know there's some supposed to be some discrimination about that, but you know, for good, good icing on the cake for a real sensitive touch. Of course, we authorize for the first time in, in U S history, the torture, the legitimate torture of another human being. Right. Oh, gosh, that didn't really bother anybody. That's why we have 30-something a day suicides right now right. of people blowing their brains out. Okay. And on the next but, show, on the next show, what we're going to do, Greg, I don't want to uh, interrupt you. On, on the next show, uh, and I'll get Greg to remind me if I forget, because we're trying to do so many things here. I want to talk about, A, the just war theory that came in by St. Augustine in the year 300-something, um, and that made sure that the church could kill in the name of God or whatever it was. They changed so, so that Christians could take a life. And I also want to use Greg to look at uh, what, what I would call how killing another human being is wrong, and everybody knows it. So, you know, what the... What the the people enlisting in war are murderers. And I'm going to look at that closely, too, with a couple of other uh, links that I have found and that I was going over today, actually, before the show. So, Greg, to wrap up, what can we, what can we say? Okay. Well, what I'd like to say, and I'll wrap things up, is I want everyone to know a couple of things. First of all, my, my agent, my agent, Joe Hickman, who wrote the two books that, that, for Jesse Ventura, okay. Uh, he was a ghostwriter, and he also wrote for John Kiriakou, the CIA agent who just spent two years in prison, uh, and he wrote on Abu Zubaydah, okay, uh, the convenient terrorist. Well, he is he has now disappeared, all right? He's one of those prominent authors on this subject matter. He has now disappeared. No one can find Joe Hickman. And the reason I'm so aware of this is he is representing my book, all right? My book with the publisher. So we, you need, if you want to find out you know, something about this, find out who the last person or last agency, there's your operative word, that contacted him. And he is now running for his life somewhere. Somewhere. We don't know. And the last thing, I'm going to wrap things up, and it's worth all the icing on the cake. I spoke to a very distinguished statesman yesterday, and he has a pedigree in international relations, and he was born a foreign citizen. And he looked me right in the eye and said, this is what I need to put on the show today, as soon as possible. Understand this, America. We, we see this business with President Trump talking about doing something to Iran for bad, for bad nuclear deals. Forget it. Iran is not going to do anything bad to anyone. America runs Iran. America controls Iran. Specifically, the CIA controls Iran. There is nothing to be afraid of with Iran. Okay? There are no sanctions on Iran. 
not like we're being told. The Iran has had nuclear access and weapons all along. They received the component uh, systems of the neutron weapon systems that we sold them, all right? They've always had the capability of defending themselves. They have been under the control of the CIA since, since the uh, days of the Ayatollah Khomeini, who was directly in cooperation with the Bush and the Reagan administration. They're, a, they're basically a stalking horse, blame everything on Iran, and that keeps the Middle East in a turmoil, which keeps gives a lot of government people jobs, mm -hmm. all right? And including uh, every happy example to start a war. Notice we never attack Iran. There's mm -hmm. a reason for that, folks, okay? So understand this. I got it from the horse's mouth. America tells Iran exactly what to do. They do it. All right. Mm -hmm. And yes, they own. And if you notice, they've been talking about Israel and Israel wants to attack Iran, all this nuclear stuff and so forth. Ain't gonna happen. They've been talking about that since Period. the 60s, haven't they? Yes, yes, yes. You know, uh, all of this stuff ain't gonna happen, folks. We own Iran. We run Iran. They will not do anything unless we tell them to do it. Wait a second. I can do my math. What are the three countries left that don't have a Rothschild Central Bank? Iran, North Korea, and Cuba. Okay, and look, and look at the position we're in with Cuba right now. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, they're doing bad things to our diplomats. Very unquantifiable, non-provable uh, issues like sound, okay? Right. There it is. You've got it. Okay, we're breaking off our relations again with Cuba, okay? Yeah, and I'm going to I'm gonna have to break my relations off with you, Greg, because we're going to do another one-hour show. <laughs> okay, uh, all right. Hey, well, you know, the people need to know certain things that are yeah. happening right now. And look at what position we're in North Korea, all right? So anyway, that's what I have. Any questions, have everybody send a note to you, Luca, and ask. All I right, I'll it. be glad to collaborate. I love it. And I can't thank you enough, Greg, once again, for your, your wisdom and your time with us. And we're blessed to have you. All right. My pleasure as always. Have Thanks a good so night. Much, Luca. You too. And good night to your listeners.